Welcome to the past HSC exam question video that covers question 16 of the 2007 exam. What I'll do here, I'll quickly read all the questions in a second. Then you get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you pause the video, attempt the question, and then when you're ready, press play, and I'll go over the actual answer itself. I also have a marking guideline, so you get to see the marking guideline and the sample answer. Right, so there's two parts to this question. It says, a student working in a restaurant kitchen is required to wear disposable gloves and a hat when preparing food. Explain how this practice assists in the control of disease, and B, identify another hygiene practice that reduces the risk of infection. That's worth one mark. So two and one mark. So we're already pause the video and attempt the question, and then we're gonna go over the answers. Welcome back. All right, so we'll go over A first. We've got, this is the actual uh, marking guideline. It says to get full marks, so two out of two, what you should be doing is you should be identifying a source of pathogens and relate the, the wearing of hats and or gloves as a type of barrier to pathogen transfers. Right, so you should be talking about hats or gloves. It says here hat or gloves or hat and or gloves. So either or or both. And you need to be talking about how, where these pathogens can come from and how wearing gloves or, or hats can actually act as a barrier to pathogen transfer. So what I'll be writing in my actual answer is that the skin is where these pathogens are on. And when we have skin contacting the food, then this, the pathogens can travel from our skin onto the food. But by wearing gloves, we can prevent these pathogens from getting there. And if we prevent the pathogens from getting there, that means we could spread less disease because pathogens cause disease. That's more or less what I cover, and that's more or less what you should have covered. You should have had the fact that skin has pathogens on it. And if you touch skin touches food, that means we've delivered these pathogens onto food. You could have said hair slash skin because it also talks about the hat. And you should have said that if you wear gloves or hats, those pathogens won't arrive on the food itself. And that means we have less disease. All right, so my first, my first statement was the skin and hair are occupied by a variety of microbes, right? That form our skin microflora. This word is just a fancy word for saying different amounts of uh, all the different types of microbes that live on our skin, right? There was a dot point which says microflora. So throwing in that word, that word is usually quite useful if you can use it properly. So you didn't have to use that word, but I just put it in there. All right, so skin and hair are occupied by a variety of microbes that form our skin microflora. These microbes can act as pathogens when entering the human body. So whilst they're on, they are on our skin, but if these pathogens end up in our body, that means we can have disease. And that's the first statement. So we can, we've connected pathogens being on our skin, the source, right? We had to talk about the source. And we also said that they can enter our body and then cause disease. So we want to make sure they don't get into our body. And the next statement was by using gloves and hats whilst preparing food, the likelihood of contaminating the food with skin microbes is reduced, right? And therefore the chance of transmitting a disease causes causing pathogen is also reduced. So by wearing these gloves, we make sure that the pathogens don't actually get from our skin or from our hair in, onto the food. And if they don't get onto the food, they're less likely to end up in someone's body and thereby causing disease. So here we've explained, because the actual verb says explain, which means you don't just purely say identify, but you need to explain how it's possible, right? So all this was there to explain, and that would have been given you two marks of two. Now, the second was identify another hygiene practice that reduces the risk of infection. That's with one mark. So because it says identify, the marking guideline just says name one hygiene practice. And that's important because, for example, if you say things like boiling water or, um, or the like, that's not, that's not hygiene, that's controlling food or water. Hygiene were things like brushing teeth, regular showers, sneezing into tissue as opposed to sneezing into a person's face or washing hands regularly. Right, so these are the hygiene practices. So what you can do in personal hygiene, what you can do to make sure we have less spread of disease. And by naming one, you'll get one out of one. So I just said washing hands after the use of, of the toilet will reduce the spread of pathogens. But even if you just say washing hands um, regularly, you would have still gotten one mark out of one. But hopefully that was useful. And where these questions come from, they came from this top point, sorry, one more thing. Explain why cleanliness in food, water, and personal hygiene practices assist in the control of disease. So here we're asked to explain how these practices, such as 
they're working and preparing food properly, so the preparation of food, how these practices help in the control of disease, and that came straight from that dot point, and so did the second one as well. Right? So hopefully that was useful.